Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for, for allowing us to come into your house. Father, we want to do everything in accordance to your will. Father, we want to hear from you. I pray that you would give me the words to speak and you would help open the ears of the congregation that they would hear from you, Father, and not from me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Unbelief. Before I go into unbelief, I want to go into Romans. And I don't know if you've heard this before. If you've heard me speak before, you've probably heard it. That Romans is a complete gospel. And the reason it's a complete gospel is because Paul never went to the Roman church. Because he was always deterred to to go somewhere else, but all the other churches he wrote to, he had he had been there, and he had spoken to them face to face, and so what you have to the other churches are small epistles, and and they do help complete the gospel, don't get me wrong, but Romans is a complete gospel because he never went there, he wanted them to understand the gospel, and the good news of the gospel we could not understand, according to Paul, and, and I, I, I don't understand everything there is to know about it, of course. <laughs> but uh, you can't appreciate the gospel unless you learn why you need the gospel. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul starts out with sin. In uh, Romans, he, he starts out in verse 18, and he, and he, and he starts out with sin. And I want to talk a little bit about sin today. And this is uh, something I've had on my heart and mind for, for years because I, I've had a teacher uh, teach me this. And, and I, I would never uh, get up here and, and, and do this in front of people until I, I felt like I was really comfortable with it. Well, I'm not. I'm still not comfortable with it. But I think it needs to be talked about because there's words in Scripture that we see in English, like the, like the word love, there's, there's several different meanings for the word love. When you see love in the scripture, you don't know which meaning to apply to that unless you go to a concordance and look at it. Well, it's the same with sin. When you, when, you, when you see the word sin, it's usually, and, and I'm, I'm, saying, I'm talking about the New Testament, uh, in Romans especially, uh, when you see the word sin, it could be either a noun or it could be a verb. And the verb is used seven times in Romans, and the noun is used 41 times. So there's a big difference in, in, in whether it's a verb or a noun. Now the verb itself is, uh, is an action word. You see a verb, I mean, there's, it's usually an action word. And it's uh, the King James Version of uh, the, the uh, Strong's Concordance. It says that it's for your faults, your offenses, your sins, and your trespasses. That's the, uh, the uh, uh, like lying and stealing, cheating, fornicating, adultery. That is uh, the list of uh, sins that are a verb, that are action words. Now, the, the noun is different. And that is the one that is used the most. And it's, it's for an offense. A, it's being sinful. It's not the acts of the sin, but it's being sinful. It's just a condition, you might say. Uh, the noun would be, the way I've been taught, is, is the condition of sin. And the verbs are, if you have the sin condition, then you will also have the verbs. You, there's, there's no way around that. You, you, you have the sin condition, then, then you have to have a sin condition first. It, it just doesn't work. <laughs> you got to have the sin condition, then, then the verbs take place. Now, if you're reading in uh, Romans, and if you go to uh, Romans 2, and, and this is an example. In Romans 2, verse 12, 
proof is in the pudding. Romans 2 verse 12 says, For as many have sinned without law, also perish without law, and have sinned in the law. So they, this is the lying, the stealing, the cheating, the fornication. This is the, uh, the practicing of the sin. And let's go to, uh, uh, everybody knows, most everybody knows, uh, Romans 3.23. It says, For all have sinned. That is the lying, the cheating, the stealing. And fall short of the glory of God. Now let's look at uh, Romans 3.9. And that will show you what, basically what the noun is. Romans 3.9. <coughs> It says, What then? Are we better than they? Not at all, for we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are under sin. They are under the condition. And let's go to uh, Romans 3.20. Another example. It says, Therefore by the deeds of the law no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law there is knowledge of the condition, the sin, the sin condition. Let's read uh, Romans 6.15. This is to the uh, verb and the noun used right next to each other. Romans 6.15. It says, What shall we say? Excuse me. What then shall we sin? The verb, the lying, the stealing, the cheating. Because we are not under law, but under grace, certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present your sla yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey? Whether of sin, leading to death, whether of the condition, leading to death, or of obedience, leading to righteousness. So you're seeing... There, there's conditions. There, there's different meanings for the word sin. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 8. It says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus is has made you free from the law of sin and death. The noun, he's made us free from the condition. If you're free from the condition of sin, then you're free from the verbs of sin. The, the lying, the stealing, the cheating. And then the next verse is, is very important to, to the Christian. It says, what, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. That would be the noun. That is, he, he was sent in the likeness of the condition, of, of the sin condition. Because if He was sent in the likeness of the verb, that would make Je Jesus a sinner. Right. There's a huge difference in the words. The, the, the one word, the, the verb is, I can't, I'm going to try to pronounce this. It is harma, harma tano. That is the verb. The noun is harmatia. And they're, they're, I don't know if I got the pronunciations right, but there's, they're, they're, they mean they're, there's different meanings. So when you're reading and you see the word sin, you need to know, well, what does it mean by the word sin? You know, there, there's a very important verse that, that all Christians should know, and it's in Hebrews chapter 4, and it is verse 15. It says, I'll wait till I hear the pages to turn up. It says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. What do you think that is? Is that a noun or is that a verb? A verb is lying, stealing, and cheating. The noun is the, is the condition. I'll tell you the answer. It's the condition. It says, yet without sin, yet without the condition. Jesus came and died for the condition. If we accept the condition, then 
we accept Him and we accept His dying for our sins and He will take care of the birds. The lying, the stealing, the cheating. And so on and so forth. Now, it says that if we walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5.16, if we walk in the Spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. <coughs> what does that mean? We're sinners saved by grace. Grace is unmerited favor with, I forgot my definition. With, we will reflect that in our characters is, is basically the end of the definition. When grace is given us, we, we just want to say, oh yeah, I, I've got grace. No. When, when God gives us grace, we reflect it in our characters. I think that's a, 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 a so much better definition than unmerited favor. It's unmerited favor when, and, and we reflect it in our characters. The, the uh, Christ Jesus is reflected in us. It is not us. It's Christ Jesus reflected in us. That is what grace is. So, we are sinners saved by grace. We were born with sinful flesh and we're sinners. Jesus was born with sinful flesh, but he never sinned. That's a hard concept for people to follow. He was born of a woman. Amen. Galatians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, I believe. He was born of a woman. So if, his, if he had a natural mother, of course he's born with her. But Jesus never sinned. That is the difference between you, you and him, is Jesus never sinned. Now I said all this, I want to change my, my sermon. And, whoa, it's kind of early. We're going to have a short sermon today. I, I told you I always get short sermons. And I, can, and I don't want to make up stuff, so. Um, we need to have a grasp. We need to learn these things for ourselves. We need to uh, study these. Don't believe what I'm telling you. Look this up for yourself. It, 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 uh, when you, if you understand the sin problem, then you can appreciate the gospel even more. Without understanding the sin problem, it's, you know, it's, you know, the gospel is no big deal. But it's everything to the Christian. It is not, we're not stuck on this planet. And I'm going to change my sermon. We're not, um, I want to change gears, I'm not going to change the sermon, I'm going to change gears. We are, we focus on our sins. And when we focus on our sins, that's like somebody trying to quit smoking. If you, if you focus on, you, 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 it's psychosomatic. If you quit trying to quit smoking and you, and you keep thinking about the cigarettes, you're not ever going to quit smoking. You need, Jesus says, that a leper cannot change his spot, nor the Ethiopian his skin color. And he also says you cannot add one inch to your stature by worry. But we can do all things through him. He says you can do nothing without me. <coughs> Jesus is everything to the Christian. And the sins that we're, we're discussing are byproducts of unbelief. Sin is a symptom of unbelief. We are not stuck on planet earth because of sin. Look at, at the uh, in the garden when Adam and Eve were tempted with the tree of life. They believed a lie. They were in unbelief. And that is the, the verse that Ray read before I started, is why Israel has not gone into the promised land. 
or never went into the promised land because of what? Because of unbelief. God told Adam and Eve, do not eat of this tree or I'm going to kill you. Did God say that? No. God, God said, if you, I, I, I'm giving you a warning. If you eat of this tree, I'm, you're going to die. God gave them a warning. And, he, and I believe He's given us the same warning today. If we do not choose Christ, we will die. An eternal death. We need to look at the byproducts. We don't need to look at the byproducts of our unbelief, which is sin. But we need to understand something about sin, and that's why we can, how we can appreciate the, the gospel. I mean, we we have uh, we have religious liberties, and they're important to us. We have. Uh, the sin condition, which is bad. We have uh, carnal natures. But they're a byproduct of having unbelief. All that's a byproduct. If we believe God, God will... If you walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. And to, to, to wrap this up... In Romans chapter 8, and I was fastly, my oh, wife's not, that's not a word, and I was headed there quickly. It says, starting with verse 4, that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in those who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. Jesus had flesh. Did Jesus live according to the, to the flesh? How did Jesus live? According to the Spirit. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, God is trying to show us that we need to live according to the things of the Spirit. When we live according to the Spirit, then we will not be in unbelief. If we're in unbelief, we're not living in according to the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Was Jesus carnally minded? Did He have a, a flesh like we had? Yes. But He never had a carnal mind. Correct. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That is the, the gift that Jesus is giving us for our belief in Him. That's all I, that boils down to. It's so simple. If we allow Jesus Christ to give us His Spirit, we won't want to live in unbelief. We won't want to live in the, uh, the byproducts of unbelief, the symptoms of unbelief, which is sin. Those are byproducts of unbelief. So, what's the answer? Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How do we walk in the Spirit? Jesus says, let this mind be in you, which was also in me. There is uh, one thing that I have neglected to, to, to mention, and, and Andrea is going to read that from the Spirit of Prophecy now. Please, Andrea. Can you give her a microphone? Right there. When the third angel's message closes, mercy no longer pleads for the guilty inhabitants of the earth. The people of God have accomplished their work. They have received the latter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and they are prepared for the trying hour before them. Angels are hastening to and fro in heaven. An angel returning from the earth announces that his work is done. The final test has been brought upon the world, and all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts 
have received the seal of the living God. Then Jesus seizes his intercession in the sanctuary above. He lifts his hands and with a loud voice says, it is done. And all the angelic hosts lay off their crowns as he makes the solemn announcement. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Every case has been decided for life or death. Christ has made the atonement for his people and blotted out their sins. The number of his subjects is made up. The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven is about to be given to the ears of salvation. And Jesus is to reign as King of kings and Lords of lords. Great Controversy, page 613, paragraph 2. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. Jesus is, where's Jesus now? He's in the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. What's he doing there? Is he just hanging out? He's cleansing it. He's cleansing it. Once the cleansing is done, no more sins are coming up to him. And why are no more sins coming up to Jesus? Well, we know that we're not sinning. My answer is, I don't think so. But we will not be sinning. But we will not know that we're not sinning because we will always measure ourselves up to the great, as uh, I like to use the word benchmark. That's what they use on a job site. When you go to a job site, they have a benchmark. And everybody uses that benchmark to get to a certain elevation. Jesus is our great benchmark. He's our plumb line. He's everything to us. Once, uh, and he's doing the cleansing right now in the sanctuary, and he's also at the same time cleansing our hearts. And let's not get in his way. Let's allow him his work, his work of cleansing. And that was my prayer for each person in here. I want to spend forever with each one of you. And I've said this before, I want to spend a million years with you, and then... That I don't spend a million years with you, then I'll come back. And by that time, I'll come back around to you again. And, you know, we can all spend time with each other forever. And I think that's, a, that's an incredible thing to think about. I want to, uh, uh, to promote us, uh, as uh, Donovan said, with, unless we know each other the way we should know each other, uh, and that's intimately, by coming to... The Bible studies, the family nights, and, and all the activities of the church. That's how we get to know each other. Because we're going to live forever. We always want to meet in Christ. We want Christ to find us loyal. And with that, Praise God. The closing song is number 317.
and be ready for your coming. Father, we thank you, we praise you because you're worthy of our thanks. And I pray that you would be with us the rest of this Sabbath day and for the rest of our lives and for the rest of eternity that we can grow closer to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.